one of the most important inventions of the 21st century. Fun fact, next year in 2025, it's going to turn two decades old. It was founded on Valentine's Day 2005. Those three original founders, I wonder what they think of the platform they've created. So let's get real for a second here. I guarantee most people watching this video probably have a YouTube channel that they want to be successful. Maybe they're considering starting a YouTube channel, or maybe you're just watching this for fun because you think you want to make a YouTube channel. Well, I can tell you right now, starting a YouTube channel can be a very exciting venture in your life. But the algorithm is not exactly the softest thing in the world. If you don't know what you're doing, it can be really hard to get yourself off of the ground. So today, I'd like to share five tips for you to successfully start your YouTube channel. I won't exactly say this is everything that you need to know, but I personally think that these are five tips that you probably would have heard from anybody else at some point. So I personally think that you should consider these five tips as keys to the massive kingdom of YouTube that can be all yours, again, if you know what you're doing. So let's get started with tip number one. Define your niche and target audience. Now, a niche is defined as a place or position that someone is comfortable in. So for example, the niche market for people buying champagne for dogs. Yes, that is a real thing. I highly doubt you will find that anywhere on YouTube, but if you happen to like making videos about dogs or champagne, or maybe even both, then you might want to listen to this tip. First, you have to choose a specific niche that you are passionate about and have knowledge in. Remember, a niche is defined as something that is comfortable for someone. So think about something you really like and then hone all of your knowledge into making good and fun, maybe educational, relatable content about it. A well-defined niche makes it easier to attract a targeted audience. And while it doesn't really matter how big the niche is, it is especially useful for niches that are particularly large. For example, let's say you have a niche for talking about how to develop, let's say, an MMORPG. Well, millions of people love playing MMORPGs. So right then and there, you have a really big potential audience to attract. Consider what unique value or perspective you can bring to your content that sets you apart from others. Keyword there is unique. So try to form your own identity. Bring something new to the table. For example, maybe you want to teach people about coding with Python and all of those good programming languages. That's great and all. But one really good way to get successful on YouTube is to have your own unique style of teaching. Maybe you're the really serious type of teacher who goes through extensive lectures to teach people all of the details of coding. Or maybe you're like a modern content creator. You really like using your wits and maybe making a bunch of jokes here and there, as well as simplifying things to make it easier for beginners. If you can bring something unique to the table, then it will really help you to define your niche. And that target audience will come to your channel in no time. Number two, invest in quality content and production. This is something that I feel needs no introduction. People just kind of know that to be successful on YouTube, you really have to value quality. Quantity or quality has been a debate for a long, long, long time. And quantity is very important. After all, people aren't really going to watch you actively if you never really upload. But I also guarantee that a lot of your favorite YouTube channels you like to watch, well, in your opinion, they make quality content. And that's because those YouTubers very much invest in that. So if you want to be like your favorite YouTubers, you've got to do what they do. Focus on creating high quality, engaging content. There are multiple ways you can do this. Invest in good audio and video equipment. Maybe look it up on YouTube or see what creators recommend or look it up in Google or in Amazon or anything like that. Just invest in good equipment. And ensure that your videos have clear visuals and sound. So whether you're a really visual type of person, maybe you're an artist, or maybe you're a very sound-focused person, maybe you're a podcaster, you need to ensure that your video at least has good 
like a good balance of both. It can have good visuals, so it can look nice and appealing, and it can have good sound. Maybe it's nice to listen to, or maybe you're even a musician and you make the type of music that people like to listen to. Well, maybe not really a musician, more like a lo-fi streamer, something like that, like lo-fi girl. Quality content is more likely to be shared and recommended, helping you build a loyal audience. There are many, many, many YouTubers who take really long breaks in between their uploads, but are still really popular and have dedicated fan bases purely because of their quality. Number three, optimize your videos for search and discovery. Now, this one is a bit boring to talk about, at least in comparison to the other ones I'll say. But tips aren't meant to be fun, they're meant to be useful. So I still recommend that you sharpen up your ears for tip number three. You need to use relevant keywords in your video titles, descriptions, and tags to improve search engine optimization. If you don't know what any of that means, you can just go ask someone about it or, again, look it up on YouTube. There are always a lot of people that are willing to help you with this. But if you know the more deeper and intricate parts of running a YouTube channel, then you'll know that using relevant keywords in your video titles, making sure that your descriptions have a bunch of tags, and making sure that those tags are based on trending topics can really help to improve search engine optimization. Search engine optimization is a very complex concept, but one of the most basic ideas about it is that the more trending topics that you have and you implement into stuff like your video titles, your thumbnails, your descriptions, it's likely to get people to search about it more. And this is likely to get search engines, maybe even the YouTube algorithm, to favor you more. This will help your videos appear in search results and recommendations. It's the type of thing where even if that video you're making isn't necessarily based on something you're interested in, if it has relevant keywords in the descriptions and video titles and it has relevant tags, then let's say someone else who might actually be interested in the video you're making, it can appear in their search results or it can be on their front page when they log into YouTube for the day. This is really good because it pushes the video to a lot more people. Stay updated on YouTube's algorithms and trends to tailor your content accordingly. This is actually pretty easy to do. You don't need to do anything intricate. You just need to keep yourself updated on what's popular on YouTube. This can be as simple as just looking through the front page every single day, or maybe something, you know, a bit more complicated, actually doing research on what is trending on YouTube. This will help you stay in favor with the YouTube algorithm and keep you up with the latest trends, if that's your type of thing. Number four, consistent upload schedule and engagement with your audience. These are two things that people really, really, really need to value when starting your YouTube channel. It's not only when you're a big YouTuber. It's not only when you're successful. It's when you're starting out. It's when you're laying the groundwork that you always have to keep these two things in mind. First, let's go over that consistent upload schedule. Develop a consistent upload schedule to keep your audience engaged and coming back for more. It doesn't necessarily mean quantity. That's a mistake that a lot of people tend to make. Having a consistent upload schedule just generally means that you can always make sure that your fans are expecting content at a specific time, and you can always expect to deliver on that time. There are many YouTubers out there that, again, barely upload. They take a bunch of breaks, and those breaks are usually really long. But people still love their content just purely because of that consistency. You can always just kind of predict when that YouTuber will come up with a new video, and you can always expect and trust them to deliver on that video with it being really good, quality, engaging, educational, whatever. It's just quality content. So no matter how long it takes, you're always happy to receive the video. This is really important when starting out your YouTube channel. Another thing is engaging with your audience. Interact with your viewers by responding to comments, which is one thing that's become really easy to do now. Asking for feedback. Not really begging for it, let's say, but asking for feedback is a good way to get people talking. And creating a sense of community. This is why developing your niche is so important. Whenever people come together on a certain niche, they're more passionate about it, and they're more willing to interact with people who have the same level of interest. Even if they might be two completely different people, they're just willing to talk to them about it because they're into the same thing. 
consistency in your upload schedule, and engagement with your audience are key to building a loyal fan base. And I mean, who doesn't want a loyal fan base, especially when you're starting out your YouTube channel? It's pretty useful. Finally, number five, utilize social media and collaborate. This isn't necessarily the most important tool of them all. I'd say all of these five tips are equally useful in starting your YouTube channel, and it doesn't necessarily need to be in this order. But I will say using social media and collaborating with other YouTubers probably will be one of the later things that you do. So again, sharpen up your ears and listen up to how you can do this. Promote your videos on other social media platforms to increase your channel's visibility. So for example, if you happen to have an Instagram account, go ahead and make posts on there talking about new YouTube uploads. If you have a TikTok account, try and post clips that you know will get people talking about your YouTube videos so that they can go to your YouTube channel. If you happen to use a Twitter account, well, X account that it's not called, but we will not be delving into that, then go ahead and make tweets based off of your videos, which will get people interested. Using social media is a really great way to promote your channel's visibility. You can also leverage the power of collaboration by teaming up with other YouTubers in your niche. It's like that one meme that goes around the internet where in a class in school, the two smartest kids team up for a science project. That's a match made in heaven because they're the two smartest kids. They're teaming up in an area that they actually care about. And who knows? Maybe that project is something they're both passionate about. Like, let's say they team up with volcanoes. You need to apply that same logic to your YouTube channel. In the community that you really big into or in the niche, try and find other YouTubers or content creators that are passionate about it like you and collaborate with them on that. Maybe you can collaborate with another person in the animal community who knows a lot about dog race. Or maybe you can collaborate with someone in the champagne community who likes to talk about news updates on big champagne brands. This is super powerful. It might not really be something to do when starting your YouTube channel, but it's probably something you should consider when you're further into your YouTube channel. Because I get it. There are some people that just like to stick to themselves. Cross-promotion can help you tap into each other's audiences and expand your reach. So whether it's through social media collaborations or getting together with another YouTuber in the same niche, cross-promotion of any kind is really powerful and can be a great tool. You just need to know how to use it well.